So here we're faced with the following problem. We want to prove using the first principle epsilon m type argument that the limit of this function equals zero. How do we do it? Well, students find these kinds of problems very confusing because, in my opinion, a lot of students aren't sure about what the aim is. What, what are they searching for? Okay, so let's discuss that a little bit. First of all, some notation. I'm going to let f of x be defined by a function. And I'm going to let L be zero. L, L represents our limit. All right, so this is what we want to do. Given any positive number, epsilon, we want to determine M of epsilon such that the following is true. f of x minus l can be made smaller than the given number epsilon whenever x is bigger than this m. So essentially, if epsilon is a small number, f minus its limit can be made small if x is large enough. Right? So we're going to come back to that. This is what we essentially what we want to do is we want to determine this n epsilon so that this is true whenever this is true. Alright, so how do we do it? Well, let's go and hunt for this m of epsilon. Now, the technique that I like to use here is just work with this and try to simplify as much as possible. Okay, so this is just sine 3x over x squared plus 4. And the limit is 0. So what we're going to do now is try to simplify and remove somehow these absolute value signs. Well, obviously this is just going to disappear. We know that sine of 3x, the absolute value, is less than or equal to 1. Okay? And the bottom part, well, x squared plus 4 is always positive. So I can actually get rid of the absolute values here and make it a little bit simpler. So what can I do now? Well, I can simplify this a little bit further. Okay? Here, I've just removed the plus 4 on the bottom and joined them with a strictly less than sign. Alright. Now notice the form of this. It's 1 on x to a power. That's a good form to have. So what I want to do now is, I'm going to find out how big x needs to be to make 1 on x squared less than epsilon. So, let's determine how big x needs to be for this to be true. Well, if I just rearrange it, bring the x squared up there, the epsilon down there, and take the square roots, I get this. Okay, so I know that 1 on x squared is less than any given number epsilon when x is larger than 1 on root epsilon. How does that help us? Well, if 1 on x squared is less than epsilon, for these values of x, and I know that 1 on x squared is greater than this minus this, then surely this has got to be less than epsilon when x is bigger than 1 on root epsilon. So our, our choice here for m 
is one on root epsilon. So we've found what, we, what we're looking for. We've determined an m of epsilon given by this, such that f minus l is less than any given epsilon when x is larger than m. So we can choose m of epsilon to be this expression here. So that our definition of the limit holds. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Remember the precise definition of a limit. Know that you are you are wanting to determine this expression m of epsilon. Write down f minus l and simplify by removing the absolute value signs and trying to get into a simple form like this, then just rearrange.